Hello and welcome to Tinkershoops Lab. Today we are going to build a fume extraction device from a few parts for under 50 euros, which will be working quite decently, I guess. Um, in fact, it is an upgraded version of my first attempt to build a fume extraction device, which already dates some years back. That worked reasonably well, but I had some minor issues which I wanted to get rid of. One of them is, uh, well, the noise uh, that it is emitting. That is basically because of two reasons. The first one, it is the fan that is built inside it. It's just a 100 millimeter fan. I should have used a bigger one in the first place, which we will do now at this attempt. And a second, it's a really old fan, which has been used quite a while. And now we take a new one, which will be much better, I guess. The second issue I had with the device was that it is a bit on the weak side from its suction uh, capabilities. So I guess that is also because I used a rather small fan. Um, so now we are going to use a much bigger one which will get rid of this problem as well. So I would say let's get started. This build will be quite cheap compared to commercial devices. The basic way a device like this is going to work is like you have a tube or some container where air and fumes are pulled into and on the opposite side it is extracted through a active coal uh, filter and that is basically what we are going to build. So first thing and the most important we need is this fan. I choose a Marley fan, which is a reasonably well-known brand. That one was really cheap. I got it at a uh, store closing sale at a local screw fix market. Don't know what that came from. Um, for, I guess it was 22 euros so that is right now the most expensive piece in the whole build and everything around it is much cheaper so we need that we also need some way to attach the uh, suction hose uh, to the fan i chose one of those adapter plates which is just for mounting a 100 millimeter suction hose, which I will show later on, to a wall. So usually you screw this to a wall like this and you get from, from, your, uh, from your tumble dryer, you get this big fat hose going right above there and extracting the warm air to the outside. So we need one of those, it is around 1 euro and 20 cents. I also chose to get two of those 150 millimeters holding clips just to mount the whole thing um, to my desk. They were, I guess, they were quite expensive for what they are. It's just a piece of plastic, injection molded plastic. So uh, they were, I guess, seven euros for two. You don't need those, so I didn't really count them in. It's just for me to have it more convenient. Also, we need uh, these screw mountings for getting the cable inside and outside of the case. They are dirt cheap. You pot potentially you have them lying around. Uh, two of them cost me 60 cents. You need an old mains cable. You need some thick, um, well, what is it? It's, it's tape. It's uh, sticky tape, but it is way thicker than usual tape. You can also use duct tape or something like that, but I have that stuff lying around and we need to build up around five millimeters of diameter. Uh, so that is quite a nice solution. Also, you need this semi rigid hose. I will give you a link down below in the description. You can get that really cheap from AliExpress or uh, Banggood or wherever you want it from China. I guess it was around 15 euros. So second most expensive part. 
Um, I have this one already mounted to my desk from my old uh, fume extractor, so I don't want to unscrew it as it is at the perfect position. But I, as I said, I will give you a link so you can take a look how it is supposed to look. Also, you need this tumble dryer hose, as I already mentioned. I will uh, show you a picture around there. I guess you all know, uh, know what I mean. Those are dirt cheap. You just need a few meters, I guess one or two meters should be plenty of in uh, plenty of hose to place the uh, extractor wherever you need it or don't want to have it. So this is just connecting this semi-flexible hose to your uh, extraction device. You should take a hundred millimeter tumble dryer hose. That should be enough. Also, I got some of those, uh, well, in Germany we call these uh, DC fix folie. It is, uh, well, it is an adhesive, self adhesive foil. And this time I choose white just to get a nice optic, uh, optical expression from the finished device. Um, that is also just pure uh, cosmetical, so I don't count that in the bill of material. You need a uh, you need a round active cold filter, which I will get right now. I should have got that before. One moment, please. I just decided to get the old one uh, to the front to show you the whole filter assembly as I had it before. But first let me show you one other uh, essential piece you need. As I said we want to mount this fan in a tube so we need a fitting or quite fitting tube. While browsing through the online stores I saw that 150 millimeter plastic tubing is quite expensive and you need all these ducts and stuff to attach this to and to attach the filter and uh, at the last experiment I came up with this. This is a perfect tube. It's exactly the diameter we needed and you can see it's quite dirty as it is 13% reduced in price because the well best before date is nearly gone but that fits so nice I just had to use it again and as I said use it again um, I already did something like that and this is the old version you can see I have a 100 millimeter fan just tucked down inside here and there is the filter I will extract that as we will reuse it since it is not really that old I just uh, exchanged it a few weeks ago the nice thing with this tube is well except from the perfectly fitting tube you get this bag of strange packing material which protects, now you see, now it's empty and you get this strange bag of packing material which you have to get rid of unfortunately so this is a hard task to do so you should better start, start right now and by the way don't eat while you are soldering. There are nasty fumes going on. You don't want that in your food. So, as I said, we need that. Put it aside. Extract the old filter. And pulling it out. There you can see my attempts at silencing this old fun. But, well, it wasn't that great. And it's made from German potatoes. So let's get rid of that. 
And here is our active coal filter. As you can see, I just glued the little hole, the mounting hole in the middle to keep it shut. We don't want any air to escape through that. And well, that's basically it. We should start. So first thing you want to do is get your roll of crisps and see how the filter fits. Sometimes it fits better in this direction with the, you see there's a, well, a kind of a ridge. Sometimes it fits in this way, sometimes it fits better around it. So just try it and this time it's way better in this direction. And it is actually quite solid on there, which is good. So we want to have this, or I want it to be mounted laying on its, on its side. Um, getting one side the hose into it and the other side should be the filter. So I will get rid of the handle at first, since I don't need that anymore. If you don't want to use foil like that, you should be careful not to have any holes into it left. So that's gone. Flattening the holes a bit so that the foil will look better. And I should start to heat up my output gun. This fits on here perfectly well. So why should I not use this great opening for extracting and put it like this. So just grab a marker and mark down where the hole needs to be. And then try to cut it away without destroying the whole lid, which is a bit tedious, I, g I have to admit, as this tends to break quite violently. So, that looks good. Oh, the hot glue is already snotting out of there. But we need another hole, ouch, right there. Again, just with a marker. Whoops. Well, who cares? That's not critical at all. And yes, I know my knife is very dull. So that's in there. That's dripping out of there. Now just place a line of hot glue around here. Press that down. Now this can attach here. And we have our entrance. And this will be the exhaust side, where the filter will sit right there. Now we have to get the fan inside there. And that can be a bit tedious. I already tried it with the old one. As you see, just using a cutter knife and a pre-scribbled uh, line. And it's, well, wobbly as hell. So I thought maybe I should try using a saw this time. And also draw a line, which could help. So, 
Let me just draw the line and I will be back in a moment after sawing it. Well, I guess that is one of the unstraightest straight line I have ever sawed. So, well, since this will be glued shut with the foil, that should be all right. Now we have to get this fan somehow into there. that we need this sticky band. As you see the manufacturer already suggested that you use this foam stuff but even with the foam it's not nearly thick enough to hold in there. As you see it's flopping around. Actually you would need a 165 millimeter fan there are 160 millimeter fans, but they are way more expensive than the 150 millimeter variant. So I chose that for obvious reasons. And we just make it a bit thicker, which shouldn't be a big problem at all, since we have this stuff. And as I said, you can also just take, for example, packaging tape or whatever just to thicken the fan itself. So let's see. So it has to go in like this. with the exhaust side to the filter. There it goes. Um, maybe I should, yes I should. I should mount the cable screw terminal right now. So let's get one of those. I don't think that this will be sufficient, but let's try it. Again, to keep any air from escaping, I take some glue under this just to hold it in place. Now we can put the cable through here. Oh, and by the way, this is completely isolated, so we don't need the protective earth. But German law says you have to, if you use one of those three pole plugs like this, you have to get the protective earth into the case, which we will do. So I cut it there and it will end right in the fan, so that should be sufficient enough. Okay, through the rubber seal, into that, maybe this, so let's take this rubber grommet, put it over there, let's try to that inside here. Which sounds easier than it is. 
because of this shitty terminals. Which is absolutely crap. But hey, you usually don't mount this five times in a row. So it suits the purpose. Let's face it that way. back on and we see that our cable is a bit too thick. Since the lid is a bit warped, but hey, should work nevertheless. Okay, now we can get that on. Ideally in the same position where we took it off or where the saw marks would go. So like this. Yes, that is okay. It was never cut in half. All we have to do is just mount our filter. Um, by the way, I will put a link to those down below too. So just slip that on and we're basically ready to go. I will just use this foil to make it a bit nicer visually. And I will mount the suction hose. So. I will be back when I have done that. So now with the white foil it looks pretty darn good I have to say. I like it really much. It looks nearly professional and with those clip holder thingies I am going to mount them like uh, well from the back side of my table I want to mount them like this and so they can clip onto ouch onto the tube like that and hold it in place. I guess that will be really a nice way to do it and I will really enjoy using this new old extraction device. Cut that off. Get rid of that. Now we can just slip this over here. So this is really a nice and tight fit. I don't need any additional fastening at all. That should work quite well. In fact, let's try it out. Let's place it here. Get that out. Switch the iron on. Switch that on. Oh, I feel the suction already. Let's see. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, that is working. Great. It's working way better than the old one. For the old one I had to be like here for it to work at all. That works a treat, I like it. 
very nice. So all that is left now is to mount this to the back side of my table using those clips. I will do that and maybe I will already have placed some photos around somewhere. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Tinkertube's Lab where we built this cheap, inexpensive but quite useful fume extraction device and if you did, I would appreciate it if you could join me here the next time. If you would like to subscribe, you can do it just down below. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to get notified each time when I upload a new video. Also, share your thoughts about this project in the comments. I would really appreciate it. I hope to see you the next time back here at Tinkertube's Lab. Until then, goodbye.